يبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كريما صدق الله مولانا العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين ومعزز تے زمانہ میں مسلمان ہو کر تم خار ہوئے تارک قرآن ہو کر This is a very famous couplet from the great poet Iqbal uh, in which he laments on Muslims failure to truly submit and understand and to understand and to follow this amazing book. Book is something very special. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about something called the Kitab Bummubin and also Imamul Kitab or Lohe Mahfuz, the divine tablet. Okay, the divine tablet, the divine tablet. And it's really interesting, this whole concept of a book, this idea that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes down things, okay, or has things written. Everything is written, he says. And in fact, in this surah that I've just recited the verse from, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, tells us that, um, uh, Everything that you are going to do is already written and hangs around your neck. <laughs> hangs around your? Allahu Akbar. It hangs on your? Wow. Subhanallah. Meaning that, and of course, we know that it's actually in every, we have trillion cells, trillion cells, billion, billion, billion cells of which we are made, okay? And every one of those trillion cells has got the full book, which has written down that, Chaudhary Saab, you are going to have a brown eyes, eh? Your hair will fall when you are 45. <laughs> That's written in it. It's in the genetic code. It's written there. Okay, so you, you can't prevent that. You know, th these are called the genotypes. All right, they're already there. You're going to be five foot seven inches tall. All right, and you're going to live 95 years. <laughs> Subhanallah, it's, it's all what? Allah has written down everything. Fi kitabim mubin. Fi kitabim. In that clear book, sometimes known as Lohi Mahfuz, the divine tablet. Allah likes books. Allah writes things in books. Do you like books? Come on, speak. Do you like books? Some Muslim households will not even have a single book, sadly. I've seen those sad houses. Sad houses, yes. Not a single book in them. But what's the point of having a book if you don't read it either? Eh? We're too busy staring into those screens. Eh? We are no longer you know, the readers of books. We have now become you know, the um, Jamaluddin TV. Qasimuddin, Mr. TV eh? or Screeny. That's what we are now. You know, we need to really examine our, really our whole attitudes. Allah talks about books. He loves books. And he says, I gave books. Wa We gave books, okay? To all the prophets, Allah says. All right? We gave them books. Suhuf, scrolls. And of course, these books have taken different forms. Now they're taking another form. But we should remember that there is, amongst all these books, there is one greatest book, the greatest of all. And that is the Quran. The Yes. Inna hazal Quran yahdi lillati hiya aqwam. And the Quran says, This majestic Quran, the Quran says, guides you to the aqwam. Not just straight path, but aqwam, the straightest. 
If you know grammar, you will know this is the, this is the superlative. This is the highest level of being straight. The most straight path, okay? And what, what, is, what is special about having a straight path rather than a, a crooked with bends in it? A path and a road that has lots of bends in it, you know the snake road that goes from Sheffield to Manchester? Johnny or not? What's the problem with that snake road? Eh? Dangerous, isn't it? Eh? Or if you go into the countryside, you know those small winding roads. In fact, where do more ac most accidents happen? Not on the motorway. Where do they happen? In those country, country roads. On those? Because they've got lots of bends in them. Okay? The bends, all right? The bends, that's the problem. Eh? The bends, yeah, no? And crookedness. Okay? Not being straight. Not being? Straight. Yes. Allah says, this book guides you to the straightest path that you can have. You're on a journey. All right? But you know, the sad thing is, a lot of us don't even think we are on a journey. <laughs> we don't think we're musafirs. We don't think we are salik. Yes. What are you? A salik. You're a salik. You're a traveler, wayfarer. <laughs> but we don't realize that. We are a traveler's. Traveling in time, traveling in space as well. You know, our Earth is not just doing this uh, uh, movement on its axis. It's not just spinning on its axis. You know that? It's also going around the, the, the sun. And what about the sun? Is the sun stationary? No. What is the sun doing? Well, you know, the sun has its own huge orbit. It's one of the largest. It will take millions of years to do its orbit around the galaxy. <laughs> so what are you doing? And we are all traveling with it because we're part of that solar system. Uh, can you see we're travelers? <laughs> Yet we don't notice it. Eh? We are traveling this way. We're traveling that way. We are traveling. We are traveling to our Lord, the ever... Are you with me? Yet, we don't realize that we are travelers. We are really... So, Allah says, you know, he's using this amazing metaphor. And this is a very powerful isti'ara, a very important metaphor, a simile, a comparison. Look, try to understand your life, who you are. Because most of us, sadly, are getting lost in our worldly lives to such an extent that we have now become drunk with it. Allah says, Sadly, the Quran says, you love, you prefer this worldly life to the hereafter. <laughs> You've forgotten that you're a traveler. Eh? You have settled down, yet you are an inn. You're in a bread and, what is it, B&B? &B? Bread and breakfast, eh? Oh, breakfast, bed and breakfast. Where are you? Bed and? But you think, no, this is my mansion forever, eh? Walad sumilyasa, agaresi, agar, patan kitni, satta nasana tak jaya. You know, we think about our seven next generations. Many of us are planning actually for our next satli agniya period ki jaya, no? And yet, we don't know, eh? This is the madness of humanity that the Quran is pointing our, at us to. So it says that, in the Quran, yahdi lillatihi aqwam. It guides you on the straightest path that will lead you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One thing about, you know, math, math, mathematicians will tell you that the straightest path is the shortest path, is the safest path, is the easiest path to your destination, okay? So, what, what else does it do? It gives good news for the believers. For the believers, believers who do amilu swalihat, do excellent deeds. Okay? And for them, it's never ending reward. Okay? But on the other hand, those who don't, you know, what does the Quran say? But those who don't, but those who don't believe, for them is a never-ending, ending, ending uh, painful punishment. So here, you know, the Quran is really inviting us to good news. Uh, and, and what is that good news, you know, that it's inviting us to? Well, the good news is, you know, you're amazing people. You're incredibly important 
person, okay, in yourself, all right? You are no less than the person sitting next to you, the person sitting before you, the person sitting behind you. You are as important as anyone in the sight of Allah. Every one of you is Khalifatullah, okay? Irrespective of your monetary status, irrespective of whether you come from the East or the West. That's the you know, most important message it's giving, how important, how significant you are. And for that realization to happen, and when you have that realization, that is called ma'rafa, that realization, that sense of recognition and knowing that, yes, this is my status, who I am, okay? But it is all to do with the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, our creator. And so this Friday, I, I wrote a, my Friday reflections on the emotional, spiritual benefits of reading the Quran. Uh, I hope you will get this and, 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 and read it, you know. And uh, you know, one of the things about good writing is that it's always mesmerizing and it makes you think. The other day I got hold of, uh, I was in Halifax with my brother and my six-year-old granddaughter, Hiba, was reading Charlie and Next part of it, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. It's an amazing story. So I started reading it. It was mesmerizing. Roald Dahl was a great writer, okay? I, I read it. I, I, you know, I read the whole book. And subhanAllah, you know, it's got amazing lessons in it. And that is what happens with books. You know, good books attract you. You read them. But there is always a lesson. And of course, the, the, the lesson in that was, you know, those five children who were naughty, who were glutinous, who were silly, who were disobedient, who were rude, who were absolutely foolish, okay? But there was one, Charlie was a good boy, you yeah, know? His father, grandfather was good, his father was good, he was a good boy. And so what happens to him? So he's trying to teach the lesson. You know, Roald Dahl is saying that if you have all those bad characteristics, you're glutinous, you're rude, you don't listen to your parents, you don't do what you do, and you're always watching the TV. So Mike TV is, uh, you know, is the one who's always watching the TV, okay? And in that, I really recommend you read that part, particularly about Mike TV, because in it, you know, this was done in back 90s, when we used to have problem with children watching too much TV, okay? So there was a lot of research going on and in schools we were complaining, okay, we've got to stop people watching too much. I don't know if you remember that, but that's what it is. <laughs> you have screens all the time, kids. And then, you know, in it he has two pages of an amazing poem in which he, he says to the, you know, the parents are speaking and say, so what do we do with them? And he says, what did he used to do before when you didn't have the TV? And what did they used to do? He says, they used to read. They used to read. They used to converse. They used to talk to one another. They used to help with whom domestic chores. Why can't he do that again? Hey. Anyway, that's a really interesting uh, because, you know, sadly, I, I notice uh, most of our mothers do this nowadays. Eh? John Charaudi, get them a tablet, eh? <laughs> get them a screen and keep them busy, eh? eh? But the damages it's doing is huge. S serious damages of these ch children will not be able to actually associate, okay? And so those are the dangers of not reading books. Of not? Yes. Why you need books, yeah, no? You need to love books, to be honest. And you know, books, actually, if you read them with interest and they will be enthralling, mesmerizing, okay? You will get hooked on them. I don't know how many of you are hooked to the Quran, but not many, Jai, no? Yes. Please come. But, you know, being hooked, but being hooked to the book of Allah is one of the greatest thing you can have, okay? So what do we mean being hooked to the book of Allah? What it means very simply is that we should love reading the Quran. And the only time you will begin to read the Quran and love it, I'll tell you, is when you begin to regard yourself as that salik, as that musafir, as that traveler, the wayfarer, okay? You're a wayfarer, and on this way, you need a guide. You need somebody to tell you, turn right, turn left, go straight, go here, go there, don't you? 
And that is what this book does. Inna haza al-Qur'an yahdi lillati hiya aqwam. This majestic Qur'an, you know, guides you, okay, on the straightest path. Okay, Allah is making that amazing claim. So, and, and when you are seriously thinking, oh, I, I'm a traveler, and, you know, I can't be left in the jungle, can I? The jungle is dangerous. It's got wild animals, okay? And I'm using that as a metaphor. You know, this society has wild animals, very severe ones, eh? Wolves, tigers, lions, crocodiles, all around you. Don't you? Don't you see them? No, no, we don't see them, eh? <laughs> we have police here who protects us. No, no. But, you know, we do have these wild animals all around us. Those who are preying on our minds, on our eyes, on our attitude. In fact, they determine our attitude, okay? They rule us through here. This is one of the most powerful and the best adverts are those which have a subliminal message, subconscious message that goes deep in there. It's not in your face, eh? Pakistani to jaya na, muhe par marne jaya na. Advertise on jaya na, muhe par, eh na. But here, you know, these, these people here are very subtle, subconscious, sublim, and it goes deep, deep in. No wonder it sticks there and it stays there. And then it molds our attitude. Attitude is the way you think. And the way you think leads to the way you behave. Isn't that right? Behavior is a result of the attitude that is built through these subconscious messages from those billboards, from these screens that you are getting. That is why I'm saying, you know, use this screen, this screen of Allah, this screen, and inshallah, it will help you to build that positive attitude towards life. That is what the Quran is about. In Ahsan, you know, the verse preceding this, in Ahsan tum Ahsan tum liyan fusikum wa in asatum falaha. You know, the Quran is full of some universal laws. You know, just like we have universal laws which govern the running of this world. Gravitation, for example, is one of the great gravita uh, law. Without that gravitation, the universe wouldn't exist. Without those thermodynamic laws, you know, that determine the movement of heat, there would be no world. The laws that determine the speed of light, there would be no world. Similarly, you know, the Quran is about those universal laws, and one of them is this one. In ahsantum ahsantum li anfusikum. You know, many people, when I say to them, Aji sahab, Chaudhari sahab, Raja sahab, eh, neki na kam karo, eh? To Aji sahab, Raja sahab takhne, oh, isna kya maksad hai isne vich, eh? Isna kya matlub hai, isnu kya milsi, eh? Allah, Allah says, listen, in ahsantum ahsantum li anfusikum. Whenever you do good, you are the first benefactor. You are the first beneficiary, sorry. You are the first? You are the first one who gains from that goodness. Then somebody else will. Try it. Eh? Even the money you give, when you give chanda, you know something happens amazing? Your brain immediately senses, ah, oh, this is amazing. So it begins to secrete oxytocin. Oxytocin is a hormone that makes you, your veins and your blood vessels dilate and you feel relaxed and calm and happy. <laughs> and it also, of course, has some neuro, uh, some other important, uh, you know, messages. Subhanallah. Say ya rahuna. Eh? So when you are generous, this is what happens. In ahsantum ahsantum le'an fosikum. So whenever you do any good, you are the first beneficiary of it. And then wa in asatum falaha. But if you do something wrong, you are the first person to be harmed by it. Okay? So when America plans these awful, you know, what do you call them? Plots. Okay? Whether they're against Muslims, whether they're against Vietnam, whether they're against China, or when China plans, or when R Russia plans, or when Britain plans, who suffers first? Of course, the kafir doesn't know that. You see, this is, the, this is the foolishness of the kafir. He thinks, no, I'm going to get away with this. Eh? All my plotting, it's, all, it's going to be okay. I can ruin Iraq, okay? I can destroy Iraq and I'll be okay. It doesn't, it doesn't realize that. وَإِنْ أَسَاطُمْ falaha. When you do something wrong, it's going to come back to you. Okay, the Quran talks about this idea of what goes around, Yes, you are going to suffer. And today, of course, Allah has made them suffer for 20 years. And we see 
that's suffering in a different way. It might not be the violence that we are seeing in Iraq or in, other, in Afghanistan or other places. It always comes back. I, I give this example you know, to everybody to understand. You know, these are great minds. The best minds of America work behind Pentagon. The best minds you can have, the geniuses, okay? who work Harvard and Yale and Oxford and Cambridge, they pick the best brains of the whole world to give them this. And what do they come up with? Plots. Evil. And what does that evil do? It comes back first to them. <laughs> it comes on them as well, okay? So you shouldn't, you know, this is a very important lesson, but it applies to individuals first. Wa in asatum falaha. Faiza. So this is the, you know, the message of the Quran. You know, let us be guided by this amazing book. You know, as I said, you know, we need to fall in love with this book. And here is a, an Indian Hindu president of India, okay? Dr. Shankar Dayal Sharma, okay? In 19, he died in 1970, and he was a president, but he was a very keen observer of the Muslims. He knew the Muslims well, very well, okay? Perhaps better than the Muslims, okay? He wrote a poem in Hindi. Uh, on what's gone wrong with these Muslims, okay? He thought for 700 years, you were the rulers of this amazing uh, subcontinent. What's gone wrong with you? And he wrote this poem, he said, the problem is, you've got no book now. You don't even listen to that book. You don't even understand that book. You, don't, you have no relationship with that book. You are disengaged with your book, and that is the reason. Can you imagine, eh? A Hindu? is telling the Muslims what's gone wrong with them. And listen to what he says, and tell me if he's wrong. Okay, when you come across something wrong, shout karna cha shuaib, ucha jayana. Okay, he says, it was an order for action. What was the Quran? An order for action. But you made it a prayer book. <laughs> you made it a? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with khatams, but that is all it is now. Khatam ni kitab hoge. Khatam karsa ji kon paak jayana, dar sa bachya khatam parsa jayana. Eni ko kum bakhto, have you thought about giving 10 Qurans to people who need them? Have you thought about giving Qurans to your neighbors? Have you thought about understanding it? No, 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 no. E dur di gala jayana. I hope you can see how truthful he is. Then he says, it was a book to be understood. But you read it thoughtlessly. Kisra? Thoughtlessly. Eh? Without any thought. Oh, come on, yaar. That's so nice. Those of you who read Quran this morning, such bolo. Such bolo. And how thoughtful were you? I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna examine you, Kari Savacha. I'm not gonna examine you, but it will be very really sad you got to be honest. Eh? Are you with me, everybody? Yes, they, they go, you know, in one way, he's giving you a tana. Oh, jago wo musulmano, you've got such an amazing book. But tonu pata hi koi ni, kya ya? And then he goes and says, it was a code of conduct for the living, but you made it a philosophy of death. <laughs> this is in the al Quran, yahdi lillati hi A book of conduct, a book of moral imperatives, of building a strong character, living a flourishing life. But you use it for? Oh, philosophy of death. <laughs> it gave life to the sinking nations, but you use it as a prayer for the dead. Okay. Muslims, what have you done to God's book? Muslims, what have you done to the God's book? And this is why, you know, Rasulullah very beautifully, eloquently said that through this book, many are raised. Yurfa'u. Many are raised. Others are humiliated, despised. Others, meaning that those who hold fast to this book, those who follow its teachings, are going to be, are going to be raised. raised. And those who ignore it, they are going to be despised. Zalil hunge. My dear brothers, how more emphatic do you want the Prophet to be? How more emphasis do you want to hear? Eh? So I hope this will make every one of you here. You know, the whole point is not to make you feel guilty, okay? It's not about that. It's to inspire you, it's to ask you, it is to move you, it is to inspire and encourage you to go and read and say, I am going to read the Quran from today. Can you all make that promise? Inshallah. Oh, inshallah, 
oh, inshallah. Dilay nal. I will, inshallah. I will read the Quran. Even if it is five minutes. Shuaib, sir, five minutes. Yeah, no. Tawari par tawajjo ye khas hai, no. Okay. So, even five minutes. Eh? Even? Yeah, just do it, yeah. Even five minutes, yeah, no. You know, remember, this is the book that changed the robbers as the protectors of humanity. Okay. The camel riders to become the great administrators. The people who were lost to become the leaders of humanity and they changed the tide of human history. This was the book, In Nahaz al Quran. Yahdi lillati hiya aqwam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, in, these, uh, in this um, blog of mine, I've talked about uh, you know, lots of ahadith. And one of those is, you know, where Rasulullah sallam says, the best amongst you is the one who learns and teaches the Qur'an. And inshallah, this is something which I know you're all very concerned about teaching your children how to read the Qur'an. So here is, you know, opportunity. September is coming, new year is starting. And I hope you'll make sure your children come to the madrasa for teaching. Jazakallah khair.